Thank you for joining me for another ITY video. I'm here today at the Huawei HQ in Shenzhen and as I'm just slowly panning around here, I am joined by Jeremy Mitchell. He is the Director of Public Affairs, Corporate and Public Affairs at Huawei. Welcome. Thanks, Alex. Welcome to Huawei. Yeah, thank you very much. Now, we're here in the exhibition hall. So this is the F1 exhibition hall, which essentially is our carrier group exhibition hall. As most people might be aware, Huawei has sort of three major business groups, our consumer group, uh, our enterprise group, and carrier, which essentially is the backbone of the company, about 70% of our revenues from carrier. So this exhibition hall is all about what we do uh, as a carrier business. Mm -hmm. So obviously in Australia, we've got Vodafone, we've got Optus, a little bit of work with Telstra. Yeah. And uh, we'll just have a really quick look at some of the stands, but I can see things like 4K video networks, Giga Homes. Uh, so I'll, um, I'll pause this, but for the viewers, you'll just be cut straight into the next video. So join us in a second. Okay, behind us we have this Experience 4K uh, video network, and uh, it's talking about how in the UK the networks have been improved and they've got 4K channels already in operation there. But here, we, here we've got a slide about video becoming a primary service. So, Jeremy, can you just take us through this particular slide? Look, for our customers, which are the operators, video is becoming the predominant use of their network. So, if you have a look here, 70% of broadband traffic is going to be video. So, you need to ensure the infrastructure can handle that. So, we're, we're moving very quickly and rapidly from just being a telephony to actually having to be major pipes with data and video content. So, that's going to be the major driver. And as 4K comes on, uh, that's going to be bigger pipes are needed. So we're just explaining here that, that video really, and you need a video content strategy in place to ensure your networks can carry all that data. Especially when we're using video to demonstrate this video exactly, content strategy. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> we're living proof, we're That's living it. proof. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, this is the IoT enabled vertical industry stand and uh, Jeremy is going to explain to us about these narrowband IoT applications. So this is something we're really excited about, this narrowband IoT, which means we can use the existing 4G networks to actually deliver IoT. And in Australia, we're working with Southeast Water already. Mm -hmm. We're doing some world firsts, which is really exciting. Uh, but this is going to be a major thing for Australia's opportunity, especially with farming, IoT farming, so smart farming. We're already doing smart parking uh, in, a, in, in the in Shanghai, mm -hmm. Dis New Disneyland. Wow. Huawei's done the smart parking, so uh, your app will tell you exactly where your car spot is. Yeah. And so 30% of traffic, they say, in cities are people trying to find car spots. Yeah, we've all done that uh, yeah, driving around in circles. Yeah. So, so look, this is really exciting. And as like I said, using the existing network so we don't have to wait to 5G. And the, and the big news is that the standard which we're implementing in Australia has actually just been verified and ratified by the, by the global, as a global standard, so we're really excited. And it's being developed in countries where the population utterly dwarfs what's in uh, Australia. Yeah. So it should work beautifully down under. It should, and look, mining and agriculture are the two areas where we can actually make a big global difference. And as I said, we're working with Southeast Water already for some world first stuff on IoT, so watch this space. Okay, let's go to the next stand. So the next part of the IoT enabled stand is the Huawei IoT solution and Jeremy will talk us through. Look, this is just sort of mentioning some of the verticals that you've got in IoT and I think the thing I want to stress is this is going to influ influence everyone. It doesn't matter what your smart home, smart business, wherever you're doing, yep. uh, IoT is going to have a major impact on it. I think we've got to get our head around that this is truly transformational that's happening across the whole industry and telco will under, underline everything that every business so i don't care if you're an accountant it doesn't matter if you're a mining company if you're you know office works that's that's what's going to underline iot so this is just talking about the you know hosting all that how you do that who do you work with we've got to have a platform that other people can actually open platforms so people can put their applications it's on compatible compatible yeah. you know everyone needs to be able to work together on all this so that's just talking about the ecosystem and we can see smart home connected vehicle smart utilities homes, yep utilities cars and as i said to you before you know uh, the utilities front, we're already doing that with Southeast Water in Australia. Yeah. Uh, so that's exciting. Fabulous. Well, let's go to the next stand. Okay, this is the LTE Advanced Everywhere slide. And uh, I mean, 
LT Advanced is already everywhere. That's right. yeah. we're, you know, obviously this is our global uh, area, so a lot of countries don't have LTE Advanced, but we're lucky in Australia, and people would have seen the voiceover LTE that we've already experienced. Yeah. So this is just talking about the benefits that, that brings, talking about the abilities of changing over deployment of, of this sort of technology, also talking about the benefits of crossover from cell, so the end user actually can, cannot notice a drop. And so that's just highlighting the stuff that we already have in Australia. Sure, but we, I mean, in Australia, we're already moving towards 4.5G. Yeah, so look, yeah, we're already working with our customers on 4.5G. Well, let's go and can, have a look at that slide. Yeah, that. yeah, okay. Okay, so this is the 4.5G slide, as we were just mentioning. Yeah, so this is going to also change things. And we talked before about narrowband IoT. Mm -hmm. That enables this sort of technology. And again, it's sort of some of the things we want to get out of 5G, we can get out of 4.5G. In, in the interim between, the interim, you know, yeah, whilst yeah. we're still, whilst the, everyone's still working on 5G, I mean, the 4.5G exists. And exactly. I mean, you're already implementing some of this with Vodafone in Australia. Vodafone in Australia and Optus in Australia as mm -hmm. well. Uh, globally, we're, we're doing it with Telefonica. Vodafone and uh, Singtel globally, so look, it's already happening, it's exciting, and as I said, it's going to enable some of those things that people thought we had to wait until 5G mm -hmm. it's to happen now, uh, and especially with IoT, multiple devices, and you, you're looking at things like uh, virtual reality, which is the biggest craze at the moment. And it, and it requires ultra bandwidth if yeah, you're exactly. doing it over and the it internet. To, you need the bandwidth, yeah. you need the infrastructure to be able to deliver that. Sure. Okay, well, let's have a look at the 5G slide. Okay. So after 4.5G comes 5G, which we're still working on, but you've got some slides. So yeah, so we've got some slides. We've got a, a prototype cell. Uh, look, 5G is going to be, again, one of those big game changers. It means mission critical stuff can actually start going on to wireless. You're talking about very, very small latency. Uh, you're looking at multiple, multiple devices are being able to huge be put speed. On. Huge people, speed. Pe pe all so. everyone able to be connected at the same time without yeah. slowdowns. Exactly. It's, so, it's the holy grail of what we wish our networks were like and, today. And look, the good thing is the industry is working together to get this right. We yes. know that it's important for everyone. So uh, Huawei and its competitors are all working very much together to get the global standard right, to get the breakthroughs right, so that by 2020, when we all expect it to be out and commercialised, we're ready to go. So I think that looks nice and uh, yeah. exciting. Well, uh, as we were driving here, I saw some of those fake trees you know, with the towers, and in Australia they make them look like palms, but here they were like... Uh, yeah, we have palm trees, we, yeah. have, we have pine trees. <laughs> well, it's nice to see the towers getting nothing a bit to smaller see here, too. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Thanks very much, Jeremy.